We're leaving the Grand Canyon and heading north to Monument Valley. We drove the 23-mile Desert View Drive east out of the park. If you're planning to drive this, make sure you give yourself lots of time since there are many great scenic stops. We found a free, first-come, first-served campground right next to the Navajo National Monument, so we thought we'd stop there for a day or two. Howdy. Hello. We are at the Navajo National Monument, and we're going to go on a couple of short hikes here and uh, check out the visitor center. It's yeah. nice and sunny today. It is beautiful. A few clouds. Well, actually, a lot of clouds. Um, but we do have all our solar running, so we'll be good. It'll be like windy as all hell. First, we walked on the Sandal Trail, which starts just behind the visitor center. It's an easy one mile out and back accessible path, though when we were there you had to watch out for some slippery spots. The trail meanders down with informative signs about how the desert vegetation was used by the ancestral Pueblo people who inhabited this area back in the 13th century. Along with the beautiful views of the valley, you can also get a glimpse of the remains of the Patatican cliff dwellings nested in a large cave. Patatican means house built on a ledge in Navajo. Between Memorial Day and Labor Day, you can hike down to the valley and participate in a five mile hike that includes a three to five hour ranger led hike around the ruins. We also tried to get out to the Aspen Trail during our visit, but the snow was a wee bit deep and we Ooh. couldn't make it. Yeah, this is fairly deep snow. I don't know how about this. That snow, holy cow, up to his knees. It's like your waist deep. Yeah, no, thank you. I broke the trail for you. We'd certainly recommend the Sunset View Campground. It was free, had grills, picnic tables, and trash cans on each site. The campground was close to some informative and beautiful hikes, as well as within walking distance from the Navajo National Monument Visitor Center. So we're back on the road and headed to Monument Valley, which is just an hour away. Well, we might have chosen poorly. We are getting socked in by clouds. You may not be able to see much of anything. These clouds look so amazing. They're like rolling over these mountains like, like cascading waterfalls. We headed into the visitor center, which had a lot of your typical park gifts, but also had a lot of beautiful local work from the area. Even if you don't purchase anything, it's definitely worth your time to walk up to the visitor center since you're greeted with views like this. A ranger stopped us before heading onto the trail and she asked us about the height of our truck camper. In hindsight, I think the ranger may have been concerned about the steeper grades at the beginning of the road and our truck camper being a little top heavy. But Big Bertha handled it like a Sunday drive in the park. Thank you. 
The loop around the park is 17 miles long and on a dirt road. RVs are generally not allowed, but we were able to drive our truck camper in. We saw several other vans doing the same. If you have a larger RV or vehicle that may not handle these roads, guided tours are available. And I hear you can go into places the general public cannot. You can even get a guided tour on horseback. The landscape of Monument Valley is both unique and beautiful. The red rock formations are famous for their distinctive shapes, which have made the area a popular tourist destination. Well, there's got to be a phone or a gas station around here somewhere, honey. I'm sure this sort of thing happens all the time. A patrol car will be by any minute. They've also been used as backdrops for many movies. Monument Valley is part of the Navajo Nation, and these formations are considered sacred. Standing near these monuments, you can't help but feel that there is something special here. Monument Valley was formed over millions of years by volcanic activity, wind, and water erosion that carved out these distinctive sandstone cliffs and buttes. The layers of sedimentary rock show us how the valley was formed and changed over time. We completed the 17-mile Monument Valley Loop, but after that road, we needed to check on our camper fast guns. It was a bumpy road with some uneven sections. We found our camper moved just a little, so we had to readjust our fast guns before yep, heading out. Our next stop was to get that iconic Forrest Gump picture just outside of Monument Valley. Quiet, quiet, he's gonna say something. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. But there's way too many people there. Yeah. No. And there goes my chance for that Forrest Gump picture. But we stopped at Mexican Hat to get my picture fix. onto Valley of the Gods Road. Whoa, that's pretty steep. Road impassable when wet. Road, so, is this the smartest idea if it's gonna rain for two days? <laughs> you tell me. I didn't know. So. Hmm. Let me check the weather. Valley of the Gods is a 17-mile loop off State Route 163, just north of Mexican Hat. This is a dirt road with many windy turns. Throughout the loop, there are several places where you can camp for free. This is BLM land. However, the three days that we were out there, we mainly saw SUVs and trucks. Damn it. I don't know if I can get there. This is so pretty. Okay, this is probably one of the more epic boondocking spots we've been to. This is so cool. <laughs> this 
This is this is pretty pretty sweet. Want to go for a walk? Ah, uh, good idea. That is awesome. The only challenge that we're going to have here is the fact that it's going to rain tomorrow. And our water tanks are at 38%. So I think realistically that should be okay, but we're going to go into uh, more stringent water restrictions in the Jocelyn household. But for this kind of view, I think we can do that. Unfortunately, I found a more challenging issue than the rain or water restrictions. I ended up getting food poisoning of some sort and was out for two and a half days. Yeah. Although we were only two or three miles in, I just didn't feel well enough to ride through the rest of the loop. Gary was nice enough to give me a poo bag, which we will repurpose as a barf bag if needed. We're heading north towards Blanding to fill up on diesel and to dump our tanks. Well, we are at uh, an RV park in Blanding getting a dump, but we just finished, so we'll spare you that. This was next to a 7-Eleven over here. If you do fill up at the 7-Eleven, you can get a free dump and water here, which is nice. Otherwise, it is $10 to dump. The dump site itself is a little, little cattywampus, so you're not going to necessarily get the best dump in the world, but uh, this worked for us in a pinch. Oh, I gotta tell you where to go. Well, you just follow the road. As typical for these past few months, we're trying to manage getting packages and dodging weather. There's another winter storm coming, but we're hoping to get through the mountain pass so we can hang low for a few days. We head through the snowstorm and quickly get low enough in elevation so we just deal with the rain and wind. Take the next left onto Needles Overlook Road. We start looking for boondocking spots off the Needles Outlook Road. Finding spots are not always easy though. There's one up here that might be interesting. Okay. What? Are there white deer? It's a herd of something. I don't know what that is. That was cool. It looks like there's a couple of other ones up here. We'll just have to check. There's another place that I just saw that might be a good idea. You want to try it? These trails look hard. So let's go walk. Uh, yeah. So this is this also might be kind of a cool spot. So when we get to the main road, we're gonna do a, a right. Yeah, that's the road. No, we're not doing that. Uh, nah. We decided to stop our search for a moment and stop by the Wind Whistle BLM campground. It's a nice campground, though. Mm -hmm. This gave us the opportunity to use their bathroom and take care of a bag of garbage before continuing the hunt for a site. It should be just around this corner on the right hand side. There should be a room. There's two sites allegedly. Fairly flat. 
true. What's that? I'm just, just amused at how stupid we are to do this. Why? Why is this stupid? It's raining. Yeah. We're definitely not going up that hill. Why not? No. Why not? Because we're going to fall. No. No. How in the hell are we going to fall? No. No. We can go left. Yes, I am. This left area looks really good. Yeah, I guess it does. I'm going to walk up there and look. We're deep here. Let me just I'd like to walk up over there and see what they're missing before we get settled. Okay. Um. We found this campsite over here, but of course that's not good enough. So we're going to go up this cattywampus hill to a little plateau. Oh, he's making that look easy. I can't walk that fast. Oh, that stuff is soft. I think we got this level just in time. The rain slash snow is upon us. Uh, I need to get things going and hunker down for a little bit. I'll see you soon. All right, here we are. Hey. We are enjoying a nice snowy and rainy day. Yay. So we decided to park on some BLM land. And uh, yeah, the truck's behind us here. Um, yeah, we went trail trail driving again. Went up this nice sandy road. He was going up areas I did not want him to. Yep, of course. Shocking. Shocking. But we made it up here to this really cool spot. I'm gonna go take a little cruise up to the bowl of the mountain, I'm gonna call it, the U of the Horseshoe, yes. and do that. The thing that we notice is this is cattle grazing area. And of course, we got the obligatory cow pies. So, no cows. No cows. No. Yeah, this is the other campsite we could have taken up here. We could have made it up here, but... Yeah. Chicken little. So yeah, I've climbed up to the base of the mountain, and this is the view. See our truck camper down there. So we're in winter storm warning right now, and uh, till tomorrow afternoon. But they said it's for 8,000 feet and above. We're only about 6,000 feet here, so we had some snow this morning, but it all melted already. But the mountain, the LaSalle Mountains, are right over there. Hopefully, you can see it. Yeah, it's kind of shaded by the clouds right now. Walking across some speckled rock. So yeah, I'm up here in this little ledge. And it's where the deer and antelope want to play. So <laughs> there's a lot of deer scattered around or antelope or whatever's out here. So I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but it echoes. Hey, Laura. <laughs> it echoes pretty cool right here. He's just over there yelling because of the echo. Nut. I'm going where she probably won't go, so that's why I'm doing this. Way over here and she's way over there. Thought I'd hike up here. I'm on this ledge. This ledge is pretty cool. You can see forever. It's really cool. So I did get scaredy pants up here, <laughs> and uh, she made she made it up here. I just told her to follow the deer trail. That's all I did, and it was pretty easy. So. And the only challenge is 
don't fall. Gary just wanders off. I'll eventually find him. Oh, there he is. Okay. Well, this is a path. Um, okay. Gonna go down into the valley before we get back up to our camper. Here a little bit here and there. Yeah, we'll be fine. Considering we walked. Yeah, all the way over there. All the way around this whole area. We came back down there, so. Yeah. Dun dun dun! We. We're coming to a cliff! Maybe. This might be a cliffhanger. Ah! I can't help it. I could swear I saw something that walked across. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. Yeah, it ain't so bad. Ah, uh, it's okay. So you're saying the hike is successful if we don't break anything? That's right. You know, if you don't break anything, you're good. I or, or or pull anything. Or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like pull your leg? Yeah. Uh, uh. It is a beautiful morning. It's a little rough last night. And we ended up having to pull the slides in. But obviously, we still have some weather to go. Holy cow, look at that. It's a coming. Holy cow. Thanks for hanging around with us, and we hope to see you next week where we head into Moab. See you at the next trail. That is not snow, that is hail. <laughs>